Pleasure to be joined once again on the show by Tiger Woods in, in a different role uh, this time, the captain. You, you've been a vice captain. That's something you've done, whether it's Ryder Cup, President's Cups. But now it's your show, man. you got to make those hard phone calls to guys that aren't on the squad. you got to decide who does who and who goes out with who and, and who plays together. What was appealing to you about that, Tiger? Um, I think just the whole process, getting to know the guys, um, trying to put together a 12-man squad. Uh, I had three great vice captains, and we're trying to figure out uh, the, who are the next four going to be after the eight autos. So that was that's always the, the toughest process to try and round out the team and and try and get that uh, get the opinions from all the guys. You know, I told them it was open communication with all of us. Um, I want to know who you want on the team, and I want to know what the order is. And uh, it was like a weekly thing. Uh, some guys went on, some guys went off. And I said, hey, call me or text me anytime in the, uh, at night, day, doesn't matter. I want it to be open. And uh, it, it has been. The guys have been fantastic and great about sharing their opinions and sharing their concerns and uh, us working through it as a team. The part that sucks is that you, the guys that you know and guys that you know that compete can't all be on the team. At some point, you've got to draw a line. How difficult is it ultimately, Tiger, to make a phone call that's, that's just no fun to be on the other end of? Well, I've... Unfortunately, I've been a part of that and been a part of the process of where the captain has moved on from you and right. uh, it, it sucks, you know, that's just the way it is. But um, all I know is that uh, all the guys that were in consideration all wished all, all of us luck and um, wish Team USA, you know, all the best going down there. Obviously, they're going to be disappointed that they're not part of it. but. Um, there's only 12, and that's just the way it goes. And you're one of them, and you should be because of how you're playing. Gary Woodland, one of your picks uh, today, made the point, because he played alongside you in Japan, he said, if you don't pick yourself, you're an idiot, because he, he described to me the way you played. He said, and, and, and Tiger, this sounded like when we were talking about old school 2000 video game come to life, Tiger Woods, the way he was describing what he saw out of you. Did you feel like you were playing at that kind of a level, like as well as you played in a long, long time? Yeah, I was finally I was finally moving better. You know, my um, I didn't realize you know how bad my knee had gotten towards the end of the end of the season, and um, it put a lot of stress on my back because I wasn't able to to move properly through the golf ball, and um, a lot of things were hurting, and I'm tearing an oblique because of it. So uh, that is all all behind me. So it's nice to move around and squat down, actually read a putt for for a change, and so uh, it's amazing when I actually I can actually read the putt that how well I can putt. Yeah, you, you, you rolled it pretty well in Japan. And I mean, I was joking with you before we started about just, just I wasn't able to go to bed because I'm watching and thinking, all right, let's see if he makes one more putt. And then you just kept making one more putt. Next thing I know, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Right. But you, you really played at, to a level where I guess surprise isn't the right word. But I, I guess I felt like after the way that the year ended last year, it looked like you were out of gas. Did it feel like that or is it all just the knee? Uh, a lot of it was the knee, and yeah. the knee caused the back to okay, get it. worse and worse, and and then, as I said, I tore my oblique. So, it, I was duct tape and bandaged together and <laughs> humpty dumpty out there, you know. So, uh, that was it was a quite a struggle at the end, end of the season, but having the, the procedure it uh, relieved a lot of stress on my body. It's been a fun week, just the people we've had on the show. Yesterday we had Matt Damon, and he and I got to talking about what he does as an actor, which you can do for a long time, as you in golf can do as well. And we were talking about his admiration for Tom Brady, and, and we were both sort of marveling at mm. the, the, the ability mm -hmm. to stay hungry after all the success. Do you still feel, Tiger, the same sort of hunger uh, to win a, a, as you once did? And maybe was it reignited with what you did, not just at the Masters, but, but recently in Japan? No, winning and the winning hasn't changed. The, the the burn, the desire to beat these guys, that's that's never waned. Right. It was my ability to be prepared to do it. Um, that's a totally different story. Um, for a number of years, I was not prepared to do it. Uh, just wasn't able to log in the time and spend the reps and do the things that I needed to do. And and going to a tournament un, unprepared, um, I would then have to rely on my hands and my mind to try and figure it out. And so that was more difficult. But now, if I'm able to log in the time and do the, do the things that I need to do, that um, the desires never change. Is that unfortunately with Father Time, it's the ability to recover and um, get the body moving at a fast enough speed 
uh, to be able to compete. You speak of father time. I couldn't help but smile, Tiger, to think back. I was actually there. It was 2000. It was Kapalua. It's you and Ernie Els, the guy that now you go up against at different mm. stages of life. And I, I watched right. the shots that you hit coming down the stretch, and you bury a putt to beat him in a, in a playoff. How much fun is it at this stage of life to be wearing these hats? And you'll wear two because you'll be playing, but go up against the guy that you've been yeah, friends yeah. with for so many years. Oh, I mean, it goes back to us competing in, what, 98 in, in Phuket, Thailand. And so um, it's been, we've done it a very long time. 2000 was fun at Kapalua, at least fun for me going eagle birdie birdie to to beat him yep and uh, we've we've had our time in south africa in the president's cups where i beat him in the singles and then we had to go back out in a playoff and our captain being jack nicholas and gary player we make putts on 18 and then one and we make two epic putts one for me downhill one for him uphill on two call because of darkness i mean that was epic um uh, we celebrate. He and I just went off to the corner and celebrated for a little, for a little bit. Like how stressful was that? Sure. You know the the whole thing came to. I mean, for me, when I, I when I realized, you know, how stressful this is, is when I was on the, the first hole. As we were playing, we played 18. We came back down one, and I had this putt. And I was reading the putt. I saw all my teammates, then our entire crew, right in my line. I missed this putt. I lose it for all of them. And I'm like, wow, I've never had that experience before. This is new. Uh, usually if I miss it, I miss it for myself. Um, this is, we play an individual sport, but this right. is, I uh, felt like, you know, a, a kicker being you know, ushered out there and then you, you either make or miss. Um, that's a, a pretty intense feeling and one that I, I cherished and now we get to do it as captains again in Australia. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.